this is more so going to look at the lens as, as far as what we need to look at as practitioners um, and looking at as far as things that we need to really consider with our team. So if you remember as far as what was discussed uh, with the presentation, so nutritionally, we want to meet overall energy needs uh, because we want to also consider the duration of the symptoms that are taking place where nutritionally this may have an effect on uh, the concussion recovery and symptomology standpoint. So address that lack of appetite, address those things as far as nausea and vomiting, uh, address those things as far as lack of sleep that may affect as far as the timing of eating as well. Uh, because as we are seeing, especially when taking to the neural metabolic cascade of events, uh, that dietary intake and caloric intake does have an impact on concussion recovery. So supplementation may protect the brain against acute uh, physiological symptoms. Uh, and that's where we start looking into creatine, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, probiotics as well, because if you really look into everything as far as for those of us in the NCAA, um, those that work with professional athletes, more got a little bit more leniency as far as what they can and cannot do. Whereas those with in the NCAA have a little bit more restrictions and have to follow certain protocols before we can end up supplementing anything with um, with quote unquote impermissible supplements. So that's where I wanted to also discuss with that for those that are working with a healthy performance team to ensure that we go through certain procedures and protocols to disclose and display to them. So that way you can improve on how you're implemented into this um, concussion recovery. So we also want to look at as far as these reported symptom evaluations and also their results from um, their, their neurological as far as exams and everything as well from their uh, baseline uh, for, from their baseline points because they may be outdated or inaccurate depending on as far as even how often you are taking these. So you want to ensure as far as that you're working with sports medicine to see, okay, what are some updated measurements? Even if those of us that are taking the omega-3 fat index um, uh, that and having those uh, serum markers as well. Um, and then there's some other serum markers that I have within my uh, protocols that I'm looking more into that I want us to start looking at as a staff, which we won't get into after, into after the season because I can't uh, build Rome in a day. <laughs> so uh, there's, uh, there's also other variables that aren't measured that we need to consider. So um, sleep complications is one of those things. So looking at as far as how those symptoms are exacerbated depending on uh, what's going on and that you're not truly looking at. And then also making sure that they are increasing those macronutrients and omega-3 fat um, through dietary intake. And then whatever you're not seeing them eat and consume, uh, making sure that one, that you're having a great relationship with those athletes to see what they can and cannot eat. And then also making sure that you're supplementing around that. So evidence around everything that we do when it comes to concussion support and recovery, you have to remember that it's, it's still novice and there's still further research that needs to take place. Uh, from that macronutrient intake composition for full clinical recovery. A lot of things that we see is based on rodent models. So, uh, and one thing that I try to advocate on is, okay, how does it fit in our setting? Uh, how does it fit with the demographics we work with? And then also you're working with human beings as well. So you're working with a lot of different factors that you have to consider. All right, so one of the other things that we need to consider too, so this was a great, uh, research that was updated as far as from um, a friend of mine, Dr. Walton or Sam Walton. So looking at as far as also the energy expenditure that is increased because of the injury itself. And that's also within 72 hours. So this is making more so of um, a, a greater emphasis on why calorie intake is very, very important. Um, not just in the energy crisis, but also overall, the overall picture of the concussion recovery as well. Because again, if you have that lack of appetite or um, depend on whether or not as far as class complications or personal complications that hinders them from being able to uh, get adequate food intake, then that's where you have to consider as far as, okay, um, their overall energy intake may be hindered as well. So working with your overall interdisciplinary team to ensure that we are getting the best outcome of this recovery. So your staff, your athletic trainers, your sports medicine physician, strength conditioning, uh, coaches as well that has their uh, return to play, the protocol and procedures in that standpoint. Uh, we ha also have to make sure that we are all, all doing a better job at this communication uh, in a sense. 
So the roles in concussion management and that I want to touch on is each single part of these phases of why it's important for us to be present in these phases. So from the pre-participation assessment, uh, recognition and diagnosis, the initial suspected concussion evaluation, uh, post-concussion management, return to learn, return to sport, and also limited exposure to head trauma. So there is definite reasoning as far as why we need to be a part of this and make sure nutritionally there is some sort of impact or um, there is some sort of presence that we have within these certain phases of the concussion management. So discussion points I want us to go over is how to look over as far as the common myths that we see, nutrition complications that we need to all consider, common scenarios, and also the application toward recovery going throughout this uh, presentation and at the end. So there's the common myths that we look at that's a common stretch is that there's a single diet that is best for concussion recovery. You see this um, more so in the private setting. You may even see this as more so with our practitioners, depending on who you are. Sometimes we get overzealous with wanting to over intervene with a single diet, a low carb, high fat diet because of what we see what we've uh, quote unquote researched or an anti-inflammatory diet. Um, you have to remember, you have to start with where the athlete is. You have to see as far as how they're consuming food, um, what, their what their preferences are, uh, allergies are, all that stuff you have to take into consideration. So there's not gonna be a single best diet uh, for their concussion recovery. So we also need to make sure that we are communicating well with our team. We also gotta put emphasis on our team communicating well with us. Um, because that being flawless or saying that there's not um, any flaws within our communication is completely false. Uh, we are working with people and people are not perfect. So with that being said, uh, we have to make sure that we're more than likely also, we may need to be the ones that are the middleman when it's all said and done uh, because of the simple fact of we have to take into consideration everything. And if you look at the bigger picture, the overall scheme of how the concussion is taking place and the injury in itself, and look at how you intervene and place your expertise within the scenario, then they also respect you more as a practitioner alongside with wanting to work with you more with the better outcomes and health and uh, performance of your athletes you serve. So the other thing is that is a myth is that any omega-3 fatty acid su supplement is going to enhance the concussion recovery. We know this because of some of them have improper ratios and I'll show you literally the table I made as far as before I decided on which supplement I wanted to do. And this is just from uh, a personal lens as far as looking at, okay, what is the ratio of DHA to EPA? What are the additional ingredients done with that? How many capsules or how much of this supplement will this individual need to take to have the recommended doses to have it in effect? Because sometimes we just throw in 2000 milligrams and it's not um, gonna be of benefit enough because the most recent research as far as show the safe uh, implementation of four to six grams or even um, from a kilogram standpoint of 30 to 40 milligrams per kilogram. So just depending on as far as what you want to do with that and looking at what is best for you and your budget, what you can afford to help intervene here. Um, and then the other myth is that medication is key to concussion recovery. Sometimes we have um, physicians or uh, other individuals that over intervene with medication medications as well to mask those symptoms. But then if that's one thing to ensure that the symptoms do not exacerbate or worsen, but it's another thing to just throw that in there without really seeing as far as, okay, what symptoms that we need to address and seeing if there's something that we can do aside from just medications that we really need to make sure the recovery point takes place. And also that the management of this concussion is having a full benefit as well. And then also looking at the compliance of that student or that, that student athlete, but that athlete in a sense of um, rather all their dietary and supplement uh, recommendations for their concussion is gonna be done 100% to the T, which is more than as far as we know that if we look at our athletes, they're not gonna do everything that we tell them to do all the time. And then literally sometimes some of them say like, yeah, I did this, this, that, and the third, but when it's all said and done, you know, because you know them and you build that relationship with them that sometimes you can take a little bit of what they say with a grain of salt because of the simple fact of that they are stretching, that they really did that. And sometimes 
they just have a loss of memory, but they thought they did and they actually did not. So the complications you wanna consider are the symptoms experience that may interfere with dietary intake, nausea, vomiting, excessive fatigue, lack of appetite, um, impaired memory, also difficulty swallowing headaches. These are all symptoms that could cause dietary complications. Um, and then also as far as access to nutrition in itself too, depending on what your budget is, depending on what their budget is, if you cannot afford as far as the, the supplements or the dietary or the food that you want them to consume that helps uh, with the uh, concussion recovery. Transportation as well. They're more than likely not, it's gonna be recommended that they do not do the driving. So what access to food do they have around them that's gonna be beneficial to their concussion recovery? And then also, say that they want to just order food in with Grubhub or Uber Eats or whatever it may be, there may be recommendation that technology needs to be minimized as well. So who can be in place and ensure that this individual gets the food they need for the proper recovery to take place? Then again, you have to look and consider the communication collaboration with sports medicine and your own personal relationship with that student athlete and that athlete you work with to make sure that they get the best outcomes of their recovery. So where can we make a difference if you look at each one of these phases? So the four main phases is, is the pre-participation assessment phase, um, the initial suspected concussion evaluation, whether that is during the game, um, in season, whether that is in practice, or whether that is in, uh, it can be as far as a prolonged symptom that takes place from a concussion that happened as far as maybe a day or two ago, and they didn't start experiencing symptoms until days after or a day after. Um, and then you have to step foot in there. And then also post-concussion management and return to learn and sport. So all these, as far as these four phases is where we definitely want to be the main, not the main, but we wanna have an emphasis on as far as dietary intake with uh, looking and observing as far as how we can have an effect on here. So your omega-3 index, um, and then also dietary assessment and education, your pre-participation phase. So looking at as far as suspected concussion evaluation, stepping foot and giving them immediate um, carbohydrates, immediate nutrients, immediate um, as far as sugar within that time frame, because you've got to look at the energy crisis that is taking place. If they are suspected of a concussion, it's better to say the sorry, especially if it's in practice or in game, because anyways, you're providing them what they need to um, have adequate blood glucose levels as well. Um, and then also preserving potential as far as muscle glycogen usage uh, to continue on throughout that duration of that activity. The other thing is looking at post-concussion management, what lab markers do you want to use? And then also what dietary supplement interventions do you want to have in place? Creatine, omega-3 fatty acids, and also probiotics um, in a sense. And also that return to learn the sport. So after they have been fully cleared, um, or as far as depending on what phase they are in within that protocol, maintaining that supplement regimen, and then also maintaining as far as what they are consuming. And most of us, we manage large roster sizes. So we have to have a plan in place as far as, okay, how do we ensure that this does not fall to the wayside and does not fall behind us? And we, uh, yes, we have this athlete, they have a concussion, they've been cleared, and then we, they just go on to about their business to basically just participate in the sport that they love and you're no longer interactive with them. So um, one thing that we did with here was showing as far as our staff, once I came in was, okay, what is our team protocol? All right, so preseason education and pre-participation assessment. So ensuring that we had nutrition and supplementation assessment done with all of our student athletes in the, in the beginning phases in the preseason. Um, and then also, how are we going about recognizing and diagnosing the concussion? So when our sports medicine staff and when they're on the sidelines or whenever they're screening and evaluating their, their, um, the concussion that may take place, the communication that's with me, but that's also why I am present as far as being there. Some of us, sometimes we have more than one team that we have to care for, but if not, then that's fine. But um, then make sure that you're present so that way you're aware um, and then you can just check in as needed because then that's where you can make a huge impact on the, uh, the, the energy crisis standpoint. And then also ensuring that you follow up uh, that, that referral is being done uh, to the designated dietitian so that way they can have uh, a place in that nutrition 
uh, implementation and intervention and that communication is being done. Um, and then also as far as following up with the post-concussion management as well, uh, what education needs to be done, checking in with them day to day, um, seeing what times they are coming in for uh, their protocol and their return to play procedures, and then making sure that they're being reevaluated by the overall team. So this is part of where I was looking at and evaluating as far as, okay, from the products that are NSS4 certified, because that is one that I know for sure that ours that our staff and team feels comfortable with. And that's what we go by as far as if we provide any supplement, we have to ensure that it has an NSS before certification. So some of them that even did not, they may have more DHA if able. And then also looking at as far as some of our um, athletes that has potential um, allergies uh, to fish and uh, shellfish and things like that, then okay, find an algae-based DHA supplement. So looking at that, okay, what are the two best options? And then I broke this down to them as far as looking at, okay, what are the additional nutrients provided? Maybe I can get some antioxidants in there from vitamin E and vitamin C. Um, and then also looking at as far as the ratio and profile. And for me, I, I, I prefer to have a two to one ratio of DHA to EPA um, with that being said. And then from what also we utilize from having that uh, standpoint of omega-3 as having upwards from four to six, some of our offense alignment, defense alignment, they're having upwards to pop potentially six to um, seven grams, depending on the, the lean muscle mass and the frame of that individual, um, and also their dietary intake. So um, I control as far as their menus, I control as far as uh, how much they're consuming, but also you have to consider what they're consuming outside of here too, that may interact with whatever you're trying to do with them. So with that being said, each one of these individuals that I have concussion and I've communicated with, um, I chose the best supplement that I wanted to from an omega-3 standpoint that would give them the DHA amounts that would help with the concussion recovery. And provided this with my staff to give them a little bit as far as education, the reason behind why we went this route with this supplement and why this is the best one, and also why we are investing in this as well. And then one of the great things that I've seen, and this has come from uh, the UFC uh, cross-sectional analysis paper and how they segmented as far as what nutrition interventions um, they do for their fighters. And even though that this is a different as far as setting, it's still great as far as from how they look at it and what we can also look at with football in a sense as well from these head impact injuries. So with creatine monohydrate, um, looking at it from a total body mass standpoint and not just doing a, um, a blanket five grams, but looking at overall, okay, what is going to have a beneficial effect based on the frame of the athlete that experienced this concussion. Then also ensuring that they have a, a antioxidants present at all times um, uh, and ensuring that they consume those antioxidants as well. So having those fruits and vegetables in place. Um, having those uh, seeds as well, those nuts and seeds as well that they can act on. Um, then also ensuring those uh, other omega-3s, so those fatty fishes that are present uh, with that, maybe it could be even that you have your staff or your team, if you, have, if, you, if you are blessed and fortunate enough to have a staff and team to provide shakes for these individuals that have this concussion as well. Um, and then also looking at as far as, okay, what style of macronutrient do you want your particular athlete to look at and have as the basis of their intake day to day? Um, and how would that be given to them? And how are they consuming that as well? So trying to have in place around in your setting, uh, beneficial foods that even when they come in for their checkups that they have, that they're able to meet their overall grams of protein per day, they're able to meet um, their omega-3 fatty acids and also their fat intake and overall energy intake per day. And then also um, how you want to segment as far as your carbohydrates as well from your simple and complex carbohydrates um, from the simple side of things from the earlier stages from the 24 to 48 hours. Um, and then also looking at as far as the complex carbohydrates, ensuring that they have that consistent intake because you're not gonna take away carbs entirely from these athletes um, 
especially when the main just that we preach to them is to consume carbs for performance and recovery uh, day to day without the injury. Um, and then also one thing we have to consider is their gut health, because if you look back into my presentation with uh, the impact of sports nutrition and cluster recovery, your gut health and the microbiota uh, is very, very, very important with the gut brain access and, and communication, therefore having a, an effect on concussion recovery when it's all said and done. And then if there's, this is where I wanted us to have a conversation on what other questions and things uh, that we want to go through uh, when looking at, okay, from personally, how we work with our athletes, and then also from um, the information I gave from a nutrition standpoint.